Today on Art of Actually Speaking, I increase my capacity for understanding, or my understanding of capacity, hopefully. I'm here at the ancient city of Nimrud, it was capital of the Neo-Assyrian Empire in the 9th and 8th centuries BCE. Well, our encampment here, which is where I am, is not exactly a scenic area, but there's an artifact that I want to talk about that we've moved here into the camp, and it is, well, very heavy. So it's hard to move, and I'm going to work with it right here and show you how I'm going to try to measure it, because I think it is a capacity measure for liquids, probably. It's a very large jar that's currently wrapped in plastic there. We've been having a lot of rains, and I'm going to uncover that and then work with it. You'll see that it's sitting next to an ancient uh, column capital. It was found near a column base, and this could be the top of that column. They both come from the palace of Adad Narari III. So, I'll see you in a second, and we'll check out this vessel. On a previous episode, I measured what I thought was possibly a grain capacity measurement cylinder. And this is possibly a liquid measure. Well, it's a vessel that could be marked to its capacity. Now, it's stone and it's very heavy. It's very thick walled. It's made of alabaster, calcite, really. Found in the palace of Ada Narari III, also called the upper chambers here at Nimrud. And it could have been actually the palace or housing of his famous mother, Shamarama. So it comes from a royal context, and maybe they needed to know how much material they had. You know, if this was holding sesame oil or olive oil or, or wine, you know, maybe Shamarama had to know how many people she could entertain. I do wonder how they got the liquid out of this. It's a round base, so it doesn't stand up. It would have to be in the ground, and in the ground it might keep it a bit cooler. Then you would have to get into the mouth, and the mouth isn't really all that big. Plus, we're missing a little bit of the rim, but overall, it's in really good shape. Now, the most important thing for me is the fact that there are 12 dots carved into the shoulder of this vessel. And those, I hope, mean that it's supposed to hold 12 units, and the unit should be the sila. Now, there is a debate, as you know from the last time that I talked about this, on what exactly the sila's equivalent is. We, we think that it's about 0.8 liters, in the south at least, but it may be closer to one liter here in the north. And that might be a temporal thing too. So here we have a vessel dating somewhere around 800 BC. And the capacity that I had before, the grain measure, that came from much earlier. So we need to test these and we don't have many vessels that are marked to how much they hold. So that's why this is so important. I measured that one in the Penn Museum and then on my way here I stopped by the British Museum and measured two more similar to that one, in fact found in the same place. And then when I got here my colleague said, oh, we have a vessel that might be marked to its capacity, and I thought, fantastic. They found it in 2022 when I was at Ur. I came here in 23, and now, well, I'm going to measure it. I'm afraid I can't be extremely scientific, but our conservator, Avalt Koek, has been helping me. He's got some measurement vessels, and we found exactly half a liter, and then I made a scoop that, I'm, <laughs> that holds one half a liter. The only thing that we have around here in quantity, though, is the gravel that paves our courtyard. So I'm going to have to use gravel. I don't really have grain or rice, even sand. We, we've got lots of dirt, but hey, we need really clean sand. So I'm going to do my best. It would be very difficult to calculate this mathematically because of the shape and the thickness. So the base is very thick, and then the walls are also quite thick. One other issue is that there is a kind of 13th mark on this. It's not a real circle. It's more of a, a, a scatter pattern, as if they wanted to put a 13 and then decided not to. So is it just over 12? I don't know. I'm going to have to scoop them in and find out. So the method I'm going to use is to make sure that this is at close to the exact half liter that I got. And then the first ones I'm going to have to put in very carefully while it's on its side. And then I'm going to have to put it up onto its base and fill it the rest of the way. So that's going to take some time. I'll do that off camera, and then I'll come back and talk about the results. 
See you then. Okay, I'm back, but uh, it's had a, we've had a little bit of rain since I worked on this, but it's now time to talk about the results. It holds a lot more than I expected. I got just over 41 of these half liter cups inside it, so that comes to roughly a, well, not quite 21 liters, because if you filled it all the way up to the top of this broken rim, you could get all 21 liters in there, but to the bottom of the rim, it's about 20.8. So we'll call it that, but of course, I was kind of hoping for 12, because I think of the Sela as about a liter in the north, but we went way over that. So I had to start thinking about what that meant. And there is a kind of precedent here in the north. They found, here at Nimrud, a number of lion weights, and they were marked how many shekels they should weigh. And when you calculated that, it came up to a shekel of about 16.8 grams. Now that's twice the southern Mesopotamian unit of 8.4. So each mark on those weights was twice what you should expect. Now another duck weight that was found in the Ninurta temple, Max Malawan found, also ended up with about a 16.4, somewhere around there. So it, you know, it would come up with about 8.2 rim. So once again, that's twice what you would expect. Well, if you take this at 20.8 and you divide that by the 12 that it's supposed to contain, you come up with about 0.86 liters to the Sela, and that fits in generally with our 0.8 for the Southern Mesopotamian Sela. Why they did this, I don't know except that when they use the words like Sila, Sutu, or their Imeru uh, in capacity, or if they use Shekel or Mana for weight, they seem to be referring to the, the system here at about 9.4 grams for the weight and at about one liter for the Sila. But when they just put in the numbers, they, like these 12 dots, they're apparently referring to the southern unit, but double it, and maybe that was a way that they could differ differentiate it. I'm really not sure, but it's the closest that I've got. And not only that, but I really doubt that they would have filled it to the top. Th this isn't a measuring vessel. It's a containing vessel. So the 12 tells us what it can contain, and even when we get a one liter bottle of soda or something, there's always air at the top because the filling machine knows to put in one liter, but it's got to contain that and a little bit more. So maybe they filled it up to the shoulder and that would be closer to our 0.8 that we might expect. There's another option that that strange scatter pattern on that after the 12 dots indicates that it can fit a little bit more but not a full drilling worth. So I am actually encouraged by this result in a way. It confused me at first but when I thought about it, it started to make some sense. So maybe I do understand the capacity a little more. We've at least got one more point of evidence where we can use to compare, and it's always good to get a marked vessel that we can actually measure. And this one's complete, except, you know, some of the rim is a little broken. I wanted to talk about some of its other features, too, because it's really pretty interesting. I don't think that much of the rim is broken off, but there's a hole that's drilled in the rim right here. And I think that that must be an attachment for a lid. This held a liquid that was measured and it must have been valuable, some kind of oil or wine, as I'd said before, and you want to protect that. You don't want things falling into your drink or whatever it might be. So you would put a lid on there and secure it probably at this hole. And another feature is that there are well, sort of vestigial handles. These, they're lugs of sorts now, but there's good evidence that they used to be much bigger, and then they were ground down to almost the edge of the vase itself. So they may have actually come all the way out and been full handles of stone that were then broken off for some reason and smoothed down. They're not just broken. So it's probably had a long life, and it's been reused a few times, but then it's, it is found in that palace, 
that it could have fallen from the upper floor or even the roof and it might have been used up there after maybe it had broken and you couldn't seal it anymore. So it's a very interesting artifact and I hope you enjoyed exploring it with me, learning a little bit about volume and maybe other things that this vase could have done. And I hope you'll join me again next time on Artifactually Speaking. See you then.